Every Friday, we check in with the Target 12 investigators for a look at the big stories they're working on. And today, we're zeroing in on the very crowded race to replace Congressman David Cicilline. <laughs> and for more on that, we're joined by 12 News Politics Senator and Target 12 investigator Ted Nisi. So, Ted, you could forgive your viewers if they're having <laughs> yeah. trouble keeping track of everybody running for this seat yeah. so far. Kate, just to give you an idea of how crazy this is, between the time I left work on Tuesday and the time <laughs> I woke up Wednesday morning, two more candidates announced for Congress. Mm -hmm. So that's how crazy it's gotten. <laughs> All right, so let's quickly give people a cheat sheet on who we're talking about here. Yeah, all right, we're going to go through them. Here's everyone who has announced so far they're running in the Democratic primary for the 1st Congressional District. You've got Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, Pawtucket State Senator Sandra Cano, pa Providence State Senator Anna Casada, Newport State Rep Marvin Abney. Then there's Providence State Rep Nathan Bia, Providence City Councilor John Gonsalves, former State Rep Aaron Regenberg, former State Official Nick Audiello, plus <laughs> former Secretary of State candidate Stephanie Beauty, last year's Republican nominee for the seat, Alan Waters, running as a Democrat, and political newcomer, Makeda Barnes. So that's 11 candidates who have announced, and that's not even everybody expecting to run. No, Kate, we aren't even done yet because State Rep Steve Casey has filed with the FEC and tells me he's planning to announce. Jamestown businessman Donald Carlson is holding an event on Sunday to kick off his campaign. And Pawtucket native Gabe Amo just resigned from his job at the White House ahead of a likely run for him. So certainly voters are going to have plenty of options in the Democratic primary, but no Republicans so far have announced that they're running for this seat. All right, so obviously that's a long list and it can give <laughs> voters kind of some overwhelming feelings yeah. as to who they might vote for. So what do you expect to happen next? Well, for one thing, I really don't think we're going to have 14 <laughs> active candidates when the primary takes place on September 5th. I expect some of these candidates will drop out if their fundraising is weak or they just aren't gaining a lot of support out in the community. So there'll be a lot of focus in the coming weeks on raising money. But we're expecting a very low turnout since this is a special election, not scheduled uh, election. So I won't be surprised if a lot of voters don't really tune in uh, until the middle of August, just a few weeks before they go to the polls. And of course, you can count on 12 News for complete coverage of all the candidates in the coming months. It's going to get crazy. It's going to get nuts. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> 12 News Politics Editor Ted Nisi, thanks for being here. Good to be here.